This is the fifth lesson on uh, the normal distribution and today we'll be looking at how to find the mean and the standard deviation or the variance. Now you would have noticed on your calculator you've got a way of finding the area if you know the value of x if you know the upper and lower values so um, if you know the upper and lower values you can use that to find the area okay and that's where you use normal CD um, if you know the area you can use that to find the uh, X value okay now this is the area from the left up to X you can use it to find the x uh, value and that's when you use inverse normal now what if we've got a question where what we're trying to find um, is the mean or the variance or even sorry the standard deviation or even the variance how do we do those types of questions well there is an an option on the calculator to do that so we're going to have to use the standardized normal distribution and that's really where it's really helpful because with the standard normal distribution we know the mean and the variance with the standard normal distribution z we know the mean is zero we know the variance is one squared we know those things so what we can do is we can turn an X problem into a Z problem where we know the mean and the variance and then work back and work out what the, the variance or, or the standard deviation, the mean of the X problem were. Yeah. So basically we start with an X problem. Now what I mean by an X problem is where we've got a normal distribution where we've got any old um, standard deviation uh, variance and EL mean what we do is we turn it into a Z problem and the way we can turn it into a Z problem is by using this this sort of little standardization formula yeah now when we turn it into a, a Z problem we know the mean is zero and we know the variance is one squared and then we can plug those numbers in on our calculator to work out what Z is. Or we may even know Z. From that, when it's a Z problem, we can then work out what the X value is by working backwards. Because basically what you will do is... Um, you, on your calculator you can put mean of zero standard deviation is one and you can use inverse normal then or just normal cd and work out what the value that you need and then we can then um, go back and then work out what the answer is as x so in the last step we turn it back into an x problem okay so use formula that standardization formula up there to change back to an X problem and that normally involves solving uh, an equation or solving two equations so this is the process we use if you need to find the mean or you need to find a, a standard deviation or you need to find both you turn it into a Z problem because we know the mean and the variance, then we can use our calculator and then we can work back. So here's a couple of examples. Right, so in this question, you can see that the mean is missing. We know the variance. And it says that the probability of X greater than 20 is 0 0.2. Again, we could use percentage point tables as well if we need to. So this question, you have to turn into a Z problem because the mean here is unknown okay so step number one as we do normally let's draw 
a diagram let's draw it in black so it's uh, nice and clear there we go so what we're missing we don't know what that mean is we need to find it um, but we do know that the variance is 3 squared which means that the standard deviation is 3 and it says that when the probability is greater than 20 so that's going to be an area going off into the right tail it's the 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 value of that area is 0 0.2 now that means that the 20 must be over here it's got to be because it says when the area is greater than 20 it's 0 0.2 so it has to be on that side if you did it on the other side remember you would get an area that is greater than 0 0.5 and 0 0.2 is less than 0 0.5 so the only possible place that could be is here and we've been told and write it down that that area is 0.2 so it's 20 percent yeah so if we want to find that um, uh, mean we're going to have to turn this into a z problem so this is our formula for changing between x and z um, and let's start to fill this in well my x value is 20 my mean I don't know and the standard deviation is 3 goes there what I now need to work out is what is that 20 as a z value so I could use the percentage points table and look for uh, 20 percent and work out what that value is as a z value or I can use inverse normal on my calculator type in an area of 80% remember your calculator wants the area from this side up to here that's what it wants so it has to be 80% um, I'm going to type in um, a standard deviation of 1 and a mean of 0 so I'm using the I want to know what that standardized value is so as a uh, z value this would be 0 0.8416 to 4 decimal places so that's what the z value is it's the equivalent so a z value of 0 0.8416 would have an area of 20% on the right hand side or 80% on the left hand side so now I can put that value of z 0 0.8 or one six in the formula so all I need to do now one six is to find the mean I would do 0 0.8416 times it by 3 and then if I take away 20 that will give me what the negative mean is and then from that I can work out what the mean is so um, if I go menu 1 I'll take my answer times it by 3 take away 20 and it's negative 17.47 so um, negative 17.48 actually to two decimal places so that means that the mean is 17.48 now when you work it out always take a step back look at the question we've got a mean of 17.48 have a look at the diagram that we drew where's the mean it's below 20 so that sort of give me an indication that that seems about right yeah so we standardized it using a formula and then we just rearrange the formula to work out what the mean is yeah okay let's try another one here we need to find the uh, standard deviation so start with the diagram as we normally do in part a right so let's put 50 as the mean there and it says that when x is less than 46 we have that area so you should be getting the idea now 
that well 46 has got to be there an area less than 46 so okay that area there is 0.2119 um, so just like before if we want to find out what the standard deviation is of variance we're going to have to standardize it so um, our formula is this um, we know our x value is 46 we know our mean is 50 we're trying to find the standard deviation I need to change that x value of 46 into a z value so what z value would give you that area of 0 0.2119 so I go to menu 7 I'm going to go to um, inverse normal um, an area of 0 0.2119 um, um, a a standard deviation of 1 and a mean of 0 okay and this tell me what the z value is you'll notice we'll get a negative well I would expect that because in the standard normal distribution so if I do this underneath so this is the standard one so this is x this is z zero would be here so this would be negative so it's basically saying right if you have the same area 0.2119 what you're going to get here that value of z would be negative 0 0.7998 yeah so negative 0 0.7998 and you can see easily what you need to do is um, if we want to solve that so let's multiply by that 46 minus 50 well that's negative 4 so negative 4 divided by negative so we're going to get a positive answer which is what we expect if you ever get a neg negative answer for the standard deviation you've done you know you've done something wrong you can't have a negative standard deviation so we'll work that out and we get literally um, five okay so that would be my my final answer for part a Right, just like the previous questions, first thing we need to do is to draw a diagram of what's going on. Okay, so we don't know the mean. That's going to go there. We don't know the standard deviation, put it there. But we do know it says that when x is greater than 35, okay, so there's my 35, and greater is going to, going to be this area. That area is 2.5%. And then on the other side, um less than 15 okay that area is 14.69 percent so because of the size of the areas i know which side to put them so we're going to standardize so you always need to standardize when you um have to work out the mean and or the standard deviation and uh, we do that by using the inverse normal on our calculator and this formula here z equals x minus the mean over the standard deviation so let's start with the left hand side let's standardize that 15 so um, menu 7 normal uh, inverse normal sorry area 0.14 
and that will give me um, uh, a value here, standardized value of negative 1.498. Uh, I'm going to try and use the exact values if possible. And over here, um, uh, let's do the same thing again. But this time, remember the area you type in needs to be from the left. So the area needs to be 97.5%. Yeah, the area from the left. So if we do that, or even just type in 1 minus 0 0.025, we get a value, a standardized value of 1.95996. So I'll probably use these values that I've written down here, but they're four decimal places. So maybe I'll go back and um, put in the other value to four decimal places, uh, maybe five decimal places. Try and be as accurate as I can. So 982. So I reckon five decimal places more than enough accuracy. Yeah, so they are my standardized values. Now I can write my two equations. So the first one uh, is this, 4982 is equal to x was 15 minus the mean over sigma. So that gives me negative 1.04982 sigma equals 15 minus the mean okay so equation number one from the other end i'll get 1.95996 equals 35 minus the mean over sigma so that's 1.95996 sigma equals 35 minus the mean right so what i can do i can subtract these two equations. So let's write them down. So I've got negative 1.4982 sigma equals 15 minus the mean. Uh, and just below that, the 1.95996 sigma 35 minus the mean. So as I said, I subtract, same size subtract. So let's uh, do this back to normal calculator. So negative uh, 1.04982 minus 1.95996. Okay, so that gives me almost like pretty much negative three. So um, negative 3.00978. I could have just put negative three really. Um, and then that's going to give me 15 minus 35, so uh, negative 20. It's sigma there. So sigma is going to equal the negative 20 divided by that number I just worked out. And I get 6.645. So 6.645. Okay, I'm going for three decimal places. I reckon, um, you know, three significant figures would be fine. Okay, so there's my um, standard deviation. So the mean, okay, all I'm going to do now is put it back into one of the equations. So I could say that the mean is equal to 35 minus... The 1.95996 times by my standard deviation. So let me do that. So 35 minus 1.95996 times by my answer. And I get 21.976. So we'll do three decimal places again because there's a zero after that. So 21.976. I probably don't need to be so accurate. Yeah, but you don't lose marks for being more accurate than you need to be. But as you know, in general, we go for answers which are really three significant figures or better. But three significant figures is acceptable as an answer. So you should now be in a position where you can do exercise 3E on pages 51 to 53.